Hello, I'm Farhad Fallah from Alec Company. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate the entire multi FPGA design partitioning steps using Alex HSDVM on the AWS cloud. Before jumping to the actual demo, let's see why we need to have a partitioning tool for our ASIC designs. To make this more clear, I'm going to use an image from HSDVM help, which you can click on it on the desktop to open it. Nowadays, system on chip designs are becoming bigger and bigger due to the involvement of various subsystems such as memories, CPUs, DSP blocks, machine learning Unix, and many other subunits. Prototyping is one of the most important steps in an ASIC design verification flow, which sits right before the chip tape out. As the big designs don't fit into a single FPGAs and need to be partitioned into a number of FPGAs, the need for a fully automated multi-FPGA partitioning tool is sensed much more than before. Let's see how HSDVM can address such challenging issues. Okay, let's open the DVM. To open that, I just double click on the icon on the screen. I define the path to my license file key, click OK. Now I need to create a new project. To do that, I click on File, New Project. I've prepared one design example, so I'm going to use that one and just create a, my working directory here. I call it Hesproj. Okay. The technology on my board is Xilinx Vertex Ultra Scale. And then I'm going to use a generic architecture netlist. Okay, so I've prepared one script to run a compilation and elaboration for me. I'm going to use that one right here. So it's going to create my libraries and then uh, set the environment variable and do the compilations for my source files and also the elaborations and set, set my custom board for this design. To run this, I click on execute open script file. It's going to take a little bit of time. I think the elaborations. So I'm going to have the designs window right here. A very brief info about this design window. We can see the design structures right here. I can open my top level and see different modules inside my designs. Underneath of that, I can see the ports, the designs ports, and also signals for my design. On the right side, it gives me some instance information like module names and how many inputs outputs I have. And also on, on this section, this window, we see the board information. I can see the number of differential signals, single ended and how many lookup tables each FPGA has, how many registers, and uh, how much BRAM I have. On my custom board, I have four FPGAs. I can see how they are connected to each other. I can see FPGA one is connected to two and four, and then I can see FPGA two is connected to one and three. And uh, pretty much any information I need about my custom board, I can find it right here. All right, now it's time for synthesis. To do that, I click on design and run synthesis and analysis. It's gonna take a little bit of time depending on how powerful your uh, AWS machine is. Uh, one thing to note here is about my custom board. Uh, so for the sake of this video, I selected a small design that normally fits in a single ultra scale 440 chip. Uh, so in order to demonstrate the automatic partitioning features, I had to decrease the defined resources of each FPGAs on the custom board. FPGA resources can be specified in the very log board files as explained in another video called how to prepare HSDVM compatible custom board files using board compiler tool, which can be found on our YouTube channel. And uh, I'm going to stop the video here because it's going to take a little bit of time and then uh, get back to the video once it's done. All right, the synthesis is over and we generated 183 netlists. 
Under the instance information, I can see a tab called the resources, where I can see the resources for this design. So DVM compares the resources to the actual reference chips and uh, we can see that number of lookup tables is much more than what we have on each chip on the board and which uh, comes to 237.5 percent so we need to do the partitioning among other fpgas to divide the, the design into different fpgas and the next step after the synthesis is to add the design to the board custom board that we have right here so I have four FPGAs as you see once we do that a clocks tab will show up this tab contains information about the clocks in our designs we can see a number of fan outs and then what are the clocks that we have actually on our designs one of the major challenges in prototyping of an ASIC RTL to a multi FPGA board is the prevalent use of gated clocks in most ASIC designs. FPGAs have pre synthesized clock trees for providing synchronized clock to the finite number of flip flops and memories across the chip. To overcome this challenge, we need to do the cl gated clock conversions to clock enable, which is supported by FPGAs. This step is done automatically using DVM and you don't have to go through all the manual works to do that. To run the clock conversion, I just click on run clock conversion. It's going to take a little bit of time. We can also define high time and low time for each clock and uh, to, to be able to define the period of that clock. So I'm going to assign the high time as 40 time goes to 42 I'll give this 20 20 I'll give 35 35 for the jtag I give 100 so we get 200 also we can define a later in the process the CDC delay uh, which is the max delay constraint for implementation and also the uh, WC delay, which is the worst case delay, uh, going to be defined in the later processes. Once we are done with the clock conversion, uh, partitioning tab will show up, under which we can see the number of partitions that we have for this design and also and how many FPGAs we have and which FPGAs assigned to what partition, resources of each FPGAs. We can see, for example, number of lookup tables, registers, memories. And also here you can uh, turn them on or off or you can show them or just disable them. So I'm going to show the this, uh, DSP blocks as well. Underneath of that, we see the, the, we see this window which has the design hierarchy and then we can see a uh, number of resources used by each module uh, separately. Uh, for example, under the entire design, we can see the uh, resources. This is, this is based on the percentage that I chose here. 233 or 34% is used, uh, which is a lot, and we need to partition it into uh, multi-FPGAs. In order to do the partitioning, I go to the partitioning tab and then I can run the auto partitioner, which is going to define multiple partitions for me. So as we see, DVM generated four different partitions for me, P0 to P3, and then uh, basically divided all the design uh, resources into uh, different partitions. There are uh, some algorithms that HSDVM follows. One of the most important one is to uh, keep the design, uh, I mean chip utilization under the uh, 90%. So we keep the rest of the 10% for the place and route uh, in the FPGA's vendor tool if it happens to need something. And then we see that it gave 89.9% of lookup tables to the P0 and then 75% to P1 
61% to P2 and then 6.4% to P3. And, the, and this table right here, we can see uh, how are the connections between each partitions. Uh, for example, uh, we see there are 1138 connections from P1 to P0. From P0 to P1, we have 819 connections. And then uh, we can see, for example, from P2 um, to P1, there is uh, 515 connections. And then right here, we can see that uh, the, we can see the total number and then partition to partition uh, numbers as well. The next step is to assign each partition uh, to one FPGAs. I have four FPGAs on the board, so I need to assign each partition to one FPGA. This is also um, this also can be run automatically using run auto placer command. Once the auto placer is done, uh, partitions are assigned to FPGAs and uh, DVM gives us some ratios here that we can see uh, which which is uh, logical over physical uh, connection ratios. Basically logical is, is the number of uh, connections that we have in our design and then the physical is the actual uh, board connections, uh, FPGA to FPGA connections that we get on the board. So if, if the number of uh, physical connections is uh, less than the uh, logical connections, we need to do the multiplexing uh, to, to get the design working uh, for prototyping. So DVM provides us with this number. Basically, it, it reads all the physical connections, informations from the board files, and then we have the uh, logical connections. So it comes up with a L over P ratio. Here is a logical the number of logicals is uh, 1957 and number of physical connections is 353 so the ratio is 5.5 any ratio above one needs to uh, have multiplexing involved in some column we see nan which stands for uh, not a number because there is no physical connections between these fpgas um, so that that's why, for example, between FPGA three and all the way to FPGA one, there is no physical connection, so it gives us not a number, and uh, um, the physical connections is zero, and logicals is four hundred twenty-three. Uh, for such cases, what happens is to we need to route uh, if the signals from one FPGA to the other one, so there will be. A third FPGA is involved, which is gonna work uh, like a bridge. So we send the, the signals from FPGA, uh, for example, in this case, from FPGA 3 to FPGA 2, and then from 2 to 1. And uh, so we define this like, or we can go from 3 to 4 and 4 to 1. Uh, so, but we, what we need to check which one has a lower uh, logical to physical ratio. But this is going to be done all by DVM automatically, so we don't have to go to go through different combinations that we get from FPGAs to FPGAs. To do this uh, automatically, I go to partitioning. I can just run run auto router. After doing that, this problem is solved. We don't see the warning signs anymore. And then also uh, all the connections between different partitions inside different FPGAs are now working. So as we see compared to the previous table that we have, uh, we had is like uh, the ratios for logicals over physicals in some cases are higher. Uh, the reason for this is that these FPGAs are being used as a bridge uh, to route the signals to other FPGAs. Another thing that I need to do here is that uh, there are some uh, global clocks uh, routed on the board, on the, on the custom board that I have. So I'm going to just define 
uh, my core clock and then just connect it to uh, one of the global signals on the board Once we are done with the partitionings uh, of our design into different FPGAs on the board, uh, the next step is to connect uh, each partitions and uh, related signals to each one uh, to the actual in, uh, signals connections on the physical board. A connections tab will show up right here. Under this, we get uh, our design information, also partitionings and how they are connected. For example, if I open the P0 partition uh, which is uh, inside FPGA1 and then if I want to see the, all the uh, signal connections between uh, FPGA1 or partition 0 to partition 1 inside FPGA2 I can see them all listed right here these are all the related uh, signals I can see the same thing between partition 1 and 0 and then also the same thing with P0 to P2, P0, P3, P3 to P0, and all the way to P3 to P2. So in this step, we need to match these logical connections uh, into the available IOs on the board or our physical connections. And as we saw under the partitioning tab, uh, we got some L over P ratios above 1 uh, which means we need to have some uh, multiplexer involved uh, so these are gonna be all done under the connections tab and uh, DVM can uh, run these steps automatically so the first step uh, is to analyze all of these connections uh, in terms of clock and delays uh, of signals going out of one partition and enter into the other partition and these information can be all uh, prepared using uh, analyze connections under the connections tab so I click on the analyze connections uh, once the connection analysis is done we can go over it by opening uh, each partition to partition tab so here uh, we see that uh, so R means rising age of the clock uh, number 2 so in DVM uh, we assign different IDs to each clock because we're gonna have a lot of different clocks in some big designs to make it much easier to read so it says that for example in this signal uh, we have rising age of uh, clock number 2 and then we have a delay of 6 nanosecond going out and a means the in clock means uh, it's asynchronous to the partition and then we have a delay of 12 nanoseconds as well so this is how we read this uh, analysis information the next step is as, as we need to have some uh, multiplexing involved which we call it uh, interchip connections uh, we need to run the interchip connections uh, or do it manually which is going to take a lot of time but in this video we're going to show how to do it automatically using DVM to do that I just go to the connections tab and then I run auto connect with synchronous ICC it depends if in my designs I have uh, uh, most most of my clocks uh, as synchronous so I'm going to use this uh, auto connect with synchronous ICC uh, which is going to have uh, lower latency and high frequency for me which uh, which is faster design and but if I have a lot of asynchronous uh, clocking in my design I need to do just the uh, auto connect here so in my design I have synchronous clocks so I click on auto connect with synchronous ICC so once the interchip uh, connections or multiplexing process is done I can open each partition to partition tab to see what's going on so I can see here that uh, from P0 to P1 uh, we got the latency of 53 nanoseconds and then if I open this uh, I see uh, there is a physical connections of so basically DVM used uh, eight differential interfaces or connections between P0 and P1 and then uh, the actual logical connections is 110 
so basically we use only eight uh, differential uh, connections to pass uh, 110 uh, logical connections and then uh, you can open the rest of it and see what's going on here uh, again the same thing 49 differential uh, connections are used uh, on the board to pass uh, 820 logical connections so if I look through other I can see for example in this one uh, between uh, FPGA 4 and 3 uh, there is also another ICC module uh, which is using two differential connectors uh, connections and to pass 22 logical connections so far we have managed the number of physical and logical connections that we have and the next step is to match these connections to the actual pins on the board so we have to define which logical connection is connected to which physical pin on the board. To do that, HESCVM uses the custom board file to find the desired pin to assign the related logical connections to the actual pin on the board. This can be also done manually, which takes a lot of time. Uh, so to do this, do this automatically, I go to connections and just click on auto assign pins. So once it's done, I can just scroll through different partitions and see, for example, uh, if I open this physical connections, there are 10 differentials here and then it tells me uh, how each uh, pin is connected. For example, out pin is BK13 and in pin is V. 27. These connections, uh, pins are from FPGA 1 to FPGA 2. So same thing if I scroll down to for example FPGA 1 to FPGA 3 connections or maybe uh, FPGA 1 to FPGA 4. I can say this uh, inter uh, chip connections and if I open it I can see the physical connections right here and if I open it I can see for example uh, so it's when it says out pin is gonna go out from uh, FPGA 1 and then go inside FPGA 4 so we get these pins number for each FPGAs but it's important to know that uh, design ports are considered as external signals connections and they need to be defined manually. So for my custom board, uh, I prepared some uh, pins. So I'm 54, I'm going to assign it to this. This one I'm going to assign M52. 51. My JTAG I put L49. P54, P53, P54. So once I'm done with assigning pins to uh, design ports, and then uh, I've done auto assign to connect uh, actual pins on, on my board to different uh, connections and each FPGAs I can validate them uh, by going through connections and click on validate and then so if there is any problem here it's going to show up and tells me uh, that th there is a warning in my uh, connections and I have to fix it so now that uh, everything is validated the last step is just to write the files uh, for the for HES board and generate all the partitions for my design and getting it ready uh, to be sent to the actual uh, vendors tool which in my case is Vivado uh, for doing the place and route and generating the bit stream for each partition and uh, programming uh, the board using these uh, files so I just click on write files 
than right. So once the files are generated, I can go to my uh, design directory. I had the HES project as my directory is so under the HES rev1. I can see all the folders related to each partition. If I go inside them, I can see the related information for each partition. Now that we generated the required files, let's go over what we've done quickly. Uh, so we use the prepared script um, to run the compilation and elaborations and then add the uh, board uh, custom board to our design and run the synthesis and then uh, we also added the design to the custom board under the clock step we did the co uh, clock conversion and then using the partitioning tab uh, we started doing the auto partitioner and then uh, we did the auto placer to assign each partition to to an FPGA and then we did the auto router uh, to route uh, the connections uh, between FPGAs uh, which they don't have an actual connections among them so we use a third FPGA to to pass the uh, connection to the other FPGAs and then uh, under the connections tab uh, we did the analysis uh, of the connections and then we, we, we ran the auto connect with synchronous ICC uh, to define the multiplexing uh, modules and then uh, at the end we auto assigned the pins and we connected uh, the design ports uh, to predefine pins that we have uh, on our board. So this brought us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you need any more information, you can always visit our website at www.aldec.com.